Hi everybody, it's Dr. Lily. We're doing some live question and answers today from Acclaim Dermatology. So I'm gonna run through your questions that you posted um, yesterday in response to our polls. Do you do lip fillers? I sure do. I've had lip fillers in my lips for many, many years and I absolutely love them. I do do them slowly over time so they look really natural, but I do do lip fillers and I really enjoy it. Second question, um, at Wary Pop, can I continue using vitamin A products and do hydrofacial sessions? We ask that you stop Retin-A products anytime before you do anything that involves microdermabrasion or chemical exfoliation. It can make your skin more irritated if you do. So one week before any type of facial, I do recommend stopping any retinol products. That includes tretinoin, retinol, retinaldehyde, and any over-the-counters that contain vitamin A products. Next question um, from Teresa Bucas. I'm a soap and water girl. Am I the worst? Teresa, you are the worst. Do not do soap and water. I am gonna kill you personally if you keep doing soap on your face. Soap and cleansers are actually the most irritating things on the face. If you wanna stay young, avoid using anything that lathers on your skin. Unless you have severely acne prone skin, I personally have oily skin, I use um, oil-based cleansers or cream-based cleansers that don't lather. Anytime you strip the oils from your skin, you're actually gonna make your skin drier and more wrinkled. So Teresa, we need to have a talk. Um, the next question that comes up is, I'm terrible at um, removing makeup at night. Am I the worst? If you don't break out, it's probably okay here and there. If you are breakout prone, you have to remove the makeup or else it's gonna clog you. That includes hair products too. So anything with um, anti-frizz serums, any products that have um, defrizzing properties, curl properties, if you sleep with those on your pillow and you put your head on the pillow, you will break out because it will clog your pores. So if you have acne prone skin, both makeup and hair products have to be off of your face and scalp before you go to sleep at night. Next question, um, how often should I get a facial extractions, etc. if I have acne prone skin? About once a month. If you have acne prone skin and you do clog, once a month is good. If you don't have acne prone skin, once every season is great. Just like going to the dentist, you get your teeth cleaned twice a year, you should come in and get your skin cleaned twice a year. Um, what are the best foods for glowing skin? Alkaline foods. Alkaline foods are the best products for the skin. So obviously water, everybody knows that, but alkaline foods are green leafy vegetables, celery, avocado, those are all alkaline and they're not acidic. Acidic products actually make your skin more irritated. Wine, obviously, is really bad for your skin, but also things that are high citrus is, is gonna cause irritation if you have a tendency to get irritated from things or anything with acidity. Okay, um, I live about two hours from Boston. Is it risky to get a fillers in a rural, a rural area? How do I find good doctors? Look on the American Academy of Dermatology website for board certified dermatologists. It doesn't matter if it's rural or in the city, it's really important that they're board certified. So make sure you look at that for any doctor you go to for anything. Board certification is a very high level of um, licensure that you get, meaning that you've passed all the exams for that specialty. Um, Spicy T. Low is asking us a lot of questions today, so let's answer those. Why am I getting a bunch of little red dots around my body? That I can't answer. You gotta come in for me to let me see them. It could be anything, and we need to see that in the office. So make an appointment, spicy t -Low. What's the best removal for eight spots on your hands? Depends on what type of spots they are, but intense pulse light laser is the best laser for spots on the hands. We can remove them in one setting. Uh, do you have consultations with your clients at the first appointment? Yes, that's a very important question. People always ask us why we do cosmetic consultations before any procedure. Every skin type is different. Every facial structure is different. Every wrinkle is different. Everybody's face has a different level of symmetry. We look at everything when it comes to doing injectables or fillers or any type of procedure. The darker your skin, the less um, tolerant you are of lasers and chemical peels. The lighter your skin, the more sensitive you are to products and the sun and UV radiation. So we do look at every single thing with respect to bone structure, fat structure, volume of the skin, um, wrinkles, lines, symmetry, all of those are very important. And when we do a cosmetic consultation, it will assess those. One example is people come in and say, well, I don't like these lines and my friend got, you know, Botox or Xeomin in their front, in their forehead lines or their 11 lines, should I get it or I want to I want to get that today. Well, maybe that's not the actual problem. That problem is actually something else that's causing those lines and the treatment may not be the right option. So it's best to get a cosmetic consultation. Um, 
Next question is when you get fillers around your chin area, how long does it last? It depends on the type of filler. Some fillers last six months, some fillers can last up to two years, and it depends on where we're injecting. When we inject around the jawline, I usually use a product called Radius, which lasts um, about 18 months. And when we inject around the corners of the mouth or the chin, I sometimes use a little bit of a thinner filler that's a hyaluronic acid filler. So it depends, and that's why the cosmetic consultation is necessary. Um, my forehead is little bumps under the skin. Retin-A is not working. What else should I use? That needs to be seen. So if, if Retin-A is not working or if a product that you know is not working at home, come on in and let me take a look at your skin so I can better assess whether that's the right product or not. Just because your friend, your mom, your sister is using a product doesn't mean that it's actually right for you and right for your skin condition. Um, is microneedling safe for darker skin patients? Yes. Microneedling is one of the only procedures that's safe for almost every single skin type. Microneedling is very safe and very effective to decrease acne scars and help wrinkles and really shrink your pore size. Um, so any type of skin can use it. What's the best medications for treatment um, for blue under eyes? That's a very difficult question. It depends. If the blue is because of a veins, usually nothing works. If the blue is because you have a depression under the eyes, we do a filler under the eyes. Uh, Sophia LHI, do you use laser and fillers for dark circles or just fillers? And what's the best option? Around the ar under eyes, I never use a laser. Only fillers um, or a neurotoxin like Zeeman or Botox we use around the eyes. Um, but no, we do not use lasers around the eyes. Um, what are the best ways to minimize pores? Using an exfoliant every day with glycolic acid is one of those ways you could do it. A retinol in the evening, if your skin can tolerate it, but not usually together, will help. And coming in for microneedling treatments are one of the best ways to minimize pores. Um, Joe Dill, what's a good sunscreen to use for your body? I love multiple sunscreens. I like the Kula sunscreens for the body. I also love Soleil Toujours. Those are two of my favorite sunscreens for the body. Um, what lotion serum should I wear at night if my skin is normal skin and I want bright? So you choose something with vitamin C. That will help increase the brightness of your skin. Do you offer free consultations? Unfortunately, in our office, we don't offer free consultations. We do spend a lot of time with the patients going over facial structure and what's best for them. So the consultations are just the time that we spend with you. So unfortunately, they're not free with us. But it's definitely worth it because we go through everything that you need to know about your skin and your face. Resh 416, what eye creams and treatments do you recommend for dark under eyes? Um, depends on what the cause is. There's five types of under eye circles. There's pigment, there's veins, there's puffiness, there's tear troughs, and there's skin discoloration. It depends. There's no creams that can do everything. So it depends on what the problem is, and that's another reason why I need to see those under eye circles. Under eye circles are very difficult to treat, so it has to be seen um, before we treat them. Um, thoughts on drunk elephant products. There's products that I love and there are products that I don't love so much. Um, I love their um, glycolic acid, which is in a white and hot pink tube. Um, I don't like the retinol that they have, and that's because it can be irritating for people that have sensitive skin, or even people that don't have sensitive skin can get irritation. Be careful with an over-the-counter retinol until you talk to your dermatologist about it. Um, Steph Khan also asked us, what products do you recommend for acne scars? What procedures do you recommend? Again, depends on the type of scars. Three types of acne scars. Red scars, brown scars, and pitted scars. Um, depends on what problem you have. Red scars, we recommend a laser. Brown scars, we recommend lightning treatments. And pitted scars, we recommend microneedling a subcision, which is a procedure we do in the office. Dev Monty, IPL versus microneedling for acne post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Depends on your skin type. IPL cannot be used on darker skin types for acne scarring. And microneedling can be used for acne scarring, but it doesn't work on hyperpigmentation. It only works for pitted scars. So if you have hyperpigmentation from acne scars, you actually need usually a lightening treatment and no lasers or um, other types of in-office procedures. Roca B Farms, um, are there long-term negative effects from using Botox starting too early, such as atrophy? No, I myself have been using Botox for over 15 years. There's no sense of atrophy at all. We do like the muscles to become a little bit atrophic and that's what makes them not move and so your lines don't move. But I haven't seen any long-term side effects from Botox in myself or my patients that I've been treating for 10 years. Um, these are all the questions. Any other live kind of questions people are asking? And not that's yet. it for today. If you guys want me to do this more often, please message me directly. I can answer your questions live once a week. Thanks for tuning in.